and uh, its management. Uh, so these will be the topic we will cover. Uh, what are the measurements that we should take? Uh, we will identify the causes, lab test to be done, uh, complication assessment and how to approach uh, when to go for a lifestyle measure, when to start the drugs and indications of surgery. So uh, let's start first with the uh, if a patient comes to our OPD, uh, what measurements should be done to assess the obesity. So the most common and most important is the body mass index. So it is calculated as weight in kilograms divided by height in meter square. And uh, this is a most commonly tool uh, which is being used uh, worldwide. But there is a problem with the body mass index that if patient has more muscle mass uh, uh, but less of fat, even then body mass index can be high. So we measure waist circumference because if it is a truncal obesity, a fat is deposited in the abdomen that is a bad fat. We call this as bad fat. So how the waist circumference is being measured? So to measure the waist circumference, it is measured uh, midway between the uh, lower costal margin and the iliac crest. Uh, and uh, we measure just uh, with a simple uh, measuring tape in centimeters. Uh, then waist to hip ratio. Uh, this is also uh, being utilized these days very commonly. And hip ratio is measured at the pubis symphysis, maximum uh, diameter at the around the hips. Uh, then uh, wrist circumference, uh, waist height ratio, neck circumference. So these are the classification of obesity uh, based on the BMI. So here the normal healthy weight is 18.5 to 24.9. But for Indian population, uh, this is being taken as 22.9. So till uh, below 23, we take it as a healthy weight. And uh, uh, in India, 23 to uh, 29 uh, uh, will be considered as the uh, overweight uh, individuals. Obesity 30 to 34.9 is grade 1, class 1 obesity. Uh, 35 to 30 uh, 39.9 is uh, class 2. And extreme obesity is uh, more than equal to 40. While uh, for Indian population, uh, waist circumference for males more than 90 and for females more than 80. So they are defined as obesity which will impact the health of the individual. Uh, waist hip ratio more than 0.9 in males and point, more than 0.85 in females. Remember these are uh, for uh, Indian population. Wrist circumference of uh, more than 16.5 centimeters males and more than 15.7 in females. Waist height ratio of more than 0.5. This ratio is being commonly uh, becoming very popular these days. Neck circumference uh, of 35.2 and 34.2 in females respectively. So these will be the measurement that we will be doing in the OPD. Now the, uh, then we will try to uh, know the identifiable causes because if we address those issues, uh, the obesity uh, control will be there. So most importantly, these are endocrine causes like polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is leading to insulin resistance, uh, hypothyroidism, uh, Cushing syndrome and some hypothalamic uh, disorders which increases the appetite leading to uh, weight gain. Uh, more common are the uh, use of some drugs. So always take the history of the drug from the patient if there is a uh, weight gain, recent weight gain. These drugs are for diabetes like insulin, sulfonylurea, pioglitazones, they lead to weight gain. Use of uh, uh, chronic use of steroids, antipsychotic agents, uh, mood stabilizing agents like lithium, tricyclic antidepressants, anti-epileptic drugs uh, commonly valproate and use of NSAIDs. NSAIDs causes a decrease in the GFR leading to water retention, uh, calcium channel blockers. So in NSAIDs and calcium channel blocker, it is usually the edema, water uh, overload is there rather than fat uh, gain. Then any patient of obesity, uh, some basic lab tests should be done. These are lipid profile, fasting lipid profile. Uh, liver function test to know ki whether there is any uh, fatty liver disease due to obesity. Uh, kidney function test for uh, electrolytes and creatinine just to know whether low GFR is contributing to weight gain. Uh, HbA1c 
uh, because obesity is a risk factor for diabetes and uh, uh, thyroid function test screening test is TSH test. Now the complication assessment. Uh, complication assessment most important will be dyslipidemia. Uh, so the most common dyslipidemia found in these patients uh, high triglycerides and low HDL levels. Uh, fatty liver disease uh, this is diagnosed by liver function test and if they are high then we can go for a ultrasound or fibro scan uh, subsequently. Uh, impaired glucose tolerance uh, and type 2 diabetes, uh, coronary artery disease assessment, heart failure and stroke. These are all the complication or comorbidities of uh, obesity. Sleep apnea is very important related to obesity. Uh, reflux esophagitis, gallbladder uh, stone disease or gallbladder cancers can occur. Osteoarthritis, gout, hyperuricemia is due to obesity and uh, risk of uh, these cancers and uh, subsequent mortality because of uh, uh, obesity. So these are the complication assessment that we will be doing for a patient of uh, uh, overweight or obesity. Now come to the management. So this is an important flow chart based on the BMI. Uh, if the BMI is between 27 to 29.9, so in that condition, we will look for the obesity. Remember, if the BMI is uh, 25 to 27, just go for a lifestyle modification. Now comorbidity, if there is no comorbid condition, what are the important comorbid condition? Uh, diabetes, uh, coronary artery disease, sleep apnea. So look for these three important comorbid conditions. Uh, so if there is no uh, comorbid condition just go for lifestyle modifications like uh, dietary modification behavior modifications and physical activity while if uh, comorbid condition is present then we will go for uh, addition of uh, anti obesity medication that is drug use while if a patient has bmi of 30 to 34.9 so lifestyle modification with drugs uh, will be indicated with this BMI. BMI of 35 to 39.9 again assess the comorbid conditions. If comorbid conditions are absent, uh, lifestyle modification with drugs. If comorbid conditions are present with a BMI of more than 35, then lifestyle modification, drugs and surgery uh, will be advised. BMI of more than 40, uh, irrespective of uh, comorbid condition, uh, we can uh, plan the patient for lifestyle modification drugs and consider for surgery. So this is the protocol for management of uh, a patient uh, who is overweight or obese. Now lifestyle modifications, uh, first is most importantly, we should set a realistic target uh, to the patient that is known as SMART. The meaning of the SMART is it should be specific, specifically related to the individual. It should be measurable. Measurable means ki, uh, in uh, one week uh, there should be a weight loss of 0.5 kgs. Agreed upon, patient should be well motivated. It should be realistic, means it should be practical. That patient will be able to follow those uh, dietary recommendation or physical activity recommendation. And it should be a time uh, timely manner, means uh, we should uh, give patient uh, targets like uh, two months, three months, this much of weight loss should be there. So this is known as smart approach for weight uh, reduction. And uh, initial weight loss, we will target for eight to 10% uh, uh, over six months. So not a very fast weight loss because a very fast weight loss can cause uh, gallbladder stones uh, complications uh, due to uh, these uh, uh, starvation and uh, very low calorie diets. And uh, uh, consumption of 1000 kilocalories per day less than the recommended uh, calories for an individual, it causes a weight loss of 1 kg per week. So this is a scientific uh, uh, result uh, consuming, suppose uh, individual uh, kilocalories are say uh, uh, 2500 kilocalories is the requirement. So we, if we give 1500 kilocalories per day, so that will definitely cause a weight reduction of 1 kg per week. Now calorie restricted diet, calorie restricted diet is 20, 1200 to 1500 uh, per day for women and uh, 1500 to 1800 for men. And a reduction will be consistent with a weight loss of 0.5 to 1 kgs per week. So this is a realistic, measurable target given to the patient. 
Now, very low calorie diet. Very low calorie diet. There are some uh, specific indications for it. Patient should be well motivated. Uh, patient weight will be more than one thirty percent of the ideal body weight. Uh, there, is, there are some medical conditions uh, in which weight reduction leads to the uh, control of those medical conditions like poorly controlled type two diabetes, hypertriglyceridemia. Patient having obstructive sleep apnea. So these medical condition will respond to weight loss, very low calorie diet weight loss. So what is the meaning? Meaning is giving 400 to 600 kilocalories per day, uh, in which 45 to 70 gram will be high quality protein, 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrate, and 2 grams of fat will be given. Along with that, supplements of minerals, vitamins and elements should be given because patient might become deficient in those uh, uh, minerals or vitamins. Now, complications of very low calorie diet, uh, patient will complain of fatigue, dry skin. So these things you have to tell the patient. Hair loss can be there. Menstrual irregularity occur in female. Uh, gallbladder stone risk is high uh, in these patients. Now physical activity. So physical activity recommendation will be uh, 150 minutes at least 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity uh, physical activity. Now the meaning of a moderate intensity physical activity is 4 km per hour of walk. Brisk walk is the meaning of moderate intensity in which patient feels slightly breathless, slight uh, chest pain is there and uh, uh, there can be uh, 75 minutes of a vigorous intensity the vigorous intensity uh, is uh, like patient uh, brisk walk will be more than four kilometers uh, per hour and patient is or patient is running uphill or uh, climbing the uh, lots of stairs so that comes in a, a vigorous uh, intensity of physical activity now behavior therapy that is very important because it is the behavior of the patient which leads to obesity like uh, eating in front of uh, tv so till the cereal uh, half an hour cereal is there patient keep on eating so these are some of the behavior that has to be modified so in those uh, behavior uh, modifications self-monitoring technique is the most important like we will advise the patient that patient should uh, uh, check the weight uh, frequently uh, and uh, patient should keep a, a note on the diary patient should mention ki what are the food items that patient has taken uh, what is the physical activity that patient has done uh, in uh, uh, and uh, patient uh, what uh, activity uh, was being done on that particular day uh, stimulus control stimulus control means uh, using smaller plates so instead of a big plate smaller plate uh, food will be given and not eating in car or in uh, television in front of tv and also we can give a patient is coming for a follow -up, patient is not able to lose weight we will give patient some problem solving like uh, we will write down key uh, th these are the things key these uh, low calorie diet is given physical activity is done still uh, uh, the patient is not able to lose weight so what should be done from the patient point of view so patient will write key these are the scopes in the lifestyle modification so this is a meaning of a problem solving now weight loss drugs uh, weight loss drugs uh, uh, these agent safety has not established beyond two years uh, for these and they are divided into two groups one is a central acting central acting means they reduces the appetite they give a sense of fullness and uh, second is peripheral acting peripheral acting means they decrease the fat absorption from the intestine so centrally acting uh, group of drugs uh, uh, combinations uh, uh, are there sympathomimetic agent and anti epileptic medications like uh, fentermine and topiramate uh, then centrally acting are naltrexone and bupropion and glp1 agonist uh, uh, diabetes agent uh, they are centrally acting while periphery acting are orally stat they inhibit the lipase and prevent the uh, fat absorption so uh, one by one uh, combination of fentermine and topiramate uh, it uh, we will start with the low doses like 3.75 fentermine and 23 milligram of topiramate and uh, after a week then we gradually increase it to <coughs> double the dose 7.5 46 uh, then uh, one week subsequently 11.25 uh, uh, oblique 69 and maximum dose will reach 15 by 92 milligrams so uh, but the uh, these drugs fentramine and tropiramate they are recommended only for 12 weeks duration after which it is not recommended side effects uh, side effect will be restlessness insomnia dry mouth 
विल बी देयर कॉन्स्टिपेशन एंड इंक्रीज ब्लड प्रेशर एंड हार्ट रेट बिकॉज ऑफ सिंपेथोमिमिटिक एक्शंस now the second combination uh, bupropion and uh, naltrexone so we uh, start with 90 plus 8 mg once a day dose and uh, then every week we increase uh, by one tablet like uh, if we are giving 90 plus 8 mg one tablet then the next week uh, we can make it uh, two tablets twice a day and third week then we can make it two in the morning one in the uh, evening like that so total dose we'll try to achieve as two tablet twice a day so that will be the maximum dose that we will try to achieve uh, and uh, we will monitor the weight loss if there is no weight loss or, or like the target weight loss is not achieved the target weight loss is 5% of the body weight at 3 months if this target is not achieved with the, this particular combination we will stop it that means this medicine is not working side effects will be again insomnia uh, dry mouth constipation while liraglutide is glp uh, agonist uh, so we start with a very low dose like 0.6 mg of uh, this dose is given because it causes uh, uh, nausea vomiting gi side effects and we gradually increase it to effective dose of 3 mg so the uh, weight loss dose uh, is uh, 3 mg for diabetes it is 1.8 mg but for the weight loss we uh, go up to uh, 3 mg and how frequently it should be increased that depend on the patient profile we can increase it uh, every 2 weeks or we can increase it uh, every uh, weekly also depending on the patient response uh, and stop this uh, liraglutide if patient has not uh, uh, lost at least 4% uh, percent of uh, body weight at third month so if patient is not able to achieve this target then stop this uh, uh, medication uh, side effects uh, are gi side effects uh, nausea vomiting gastroesophageal reflux diseases orally state is peripheral acting uh, so it should be given 120 mg before the meals uh, whatever major meal patient is taking uh, side effect will be uh, fat soluble vitamin uh, absorption will be reduced and there will be oily stools with fecal urgency that is the most important side effect of this uh, orally stat now uh, surgery criteria surgery criteria will be bmi more than 35 with a, a comorbid condition or bmi of more than 40 Uh, repeated failure of other therapeutic approach so this is not as a first line uh, treatment option so if patient has failed with the lifestyle modification and uh, uh, medicines then it uh, uh, should be uh, done so all the criteria should be fulfilled absence of alcoholism other addictions or any psychiatric illness and prior clearance by the psychiatrist is important so uh, we'll not go into the discussion of what type of the bariatric surgeries are being done because our topic is mainly limited to the patient coming to us in the opd how to medically manage the patient so if you have any questions or any feedback you want to share or any recommendation you can put in the comment section thank you